Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I want to tackle a design constraint that I have and that is the sizing of the thrust plate multi-adapter here which allows me to connect multiple engines to it. And the design constraint is that I can't make this larger than 3 meters and with the size of the rockets that we're currently building that is too small. So I need to figure out what technology will allow me to unlock the larger sizes and what what uh, contract I need to fulfill in order to take care of that. I want to do it before the asteroid contract so we've got the asteroid coming in in uh, however many days and I need something that I can do quickly so yeah let's take a look at the research tree the tech tree and see what we need okay we haven't taken a look at the tech tree for a while but basically we've got everything up to here and then we've got some technologies that require 300 that we could unlock right now but I don't see the thrust plate multi adapter among them this has a lot of stuff structural separator plates Oh, for Talsar's cargo solutions. I, I haven't even played around with that sort of thing. I wonder what that's all about. Oh, there it is. Uh, no, that's the... Oh, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, that is. That's the thrust plate up to 6 meters in size. So this is the one we need. And it looks like it comes with a lot of other stuff. Lots and lots of other stuff. Spherical liquid hydrogen tanks, even. Don't even know. Uh, it looks like that's for nuclear rocket motors. Okay, so uh, this is the technology I want to unlock. We need about a hundred science to do so. Let's take a look at our contracts. This is our active contracts and um, exploring stuff on Minmus of a rover is a thing. Aerial surveys of curb and an altitude of well, that's pretty easy oh well, I have been having trouble with planes though but all it requires is flying over these sites and it gives us a hundred science amazingly enough okay well that'll be the most that'll be the quickest one in terms of just not having a long flight to a distant destination but the question is whether I can do it or not because we've had trouble with planes we lost Jeb that way right uh, other things, well, obviously the actual asteroid contract will be able to take care of it, but we want to do it before that. Duna rover, well, of course, this stuff will wait for the Duna transfer point. Eve, the same way, Jewel, the same way. All this other stuff has to wait for a while. So, yeah, I think the aerial surveys, we need to get this contract done. The deadline's in 83 days anyway. If I don't get it done, I'm liable to to fail it so let's build the safest aircraft we can in order to take care of this uh, but uh, it needs to be able to get to what altitude where was that I'll have them 17,000 to 24,000 huh well that's not gonna be a jet is it not with far well no I could be if we slap enough air intakes on it, well, we'll have to see. We'll need it fairly powerful. All right, let me go to the SPH and see what I can do. Okay, so here's what I've got. And we're going to try jet engine only first because it's lighter uh, and gives us a lot of range. So we could potentially cover a lot of targets. And the key is that I need to get to a high enough altitude. We've got a good thrust to weight ratio with this so hopefully that will work out but it's all a matter of uh, well you know the intakes and far and all so yep this is our shark I've called it the shark I don't know why I just figured that's a good name and just four parachutes here that'll be a rough landing if it's uh, anywhere near its current mass but hopefully it'll be enough for the pilot to survive. Uh, in any case, we do have VNG parachutes installed, so that's a plus. But uh, let's let's just get out there and see what we can do. We don't have specializations among our Kerbonauts, but let's let's hire a few more. 
uh, Jorvin, Kermit Milger. Any, anybody interesting? Bart Zahn. Sherlock. Okay. Don't know why. Okay, we don't need this anymore. Gus Van. Shelbles. That's a good one. And Milford. Alright, that's enough. And considering the recent fate of many planes, I want a lot of courage, so I'm going to go with Melford. Alright, Melford Kerman will get to take up the shark and we will see whether he can complete the contract. Okay, it looks like it's dawn, so I'm not too worried about uh, the timing of this. Okay, we've put lights on, as you can see. I've made sure that uh, we are properly lit. Lots of safety features, like the parachutes and all. Making sure it has all that thrust. Alright, and we don't need FMRS. What we do need is to target our first location. Looks like it's these. I think they'll be... We'll, we'll go around like this clockwise. So I'll go for... Wilton's anomaly first. Okay, off we go. The Delta V estimates for the jets are really ridiculous. We seem to be going off to one side here. Should be able to rotate. Up you go. Alright. Well, we've got that going for us. Well, let's see how high I can go. It needs to get to that 17,000 mark. See how it turns. That's critical. Handling okay. I mean, I didn't take any any risks with this design. You can see normal horizontal stabilizer, no canard, nice big wing, lots of control. Yeah, I was. This is a conventional design. This is uh, sort of based on F 86 Saber, you know, with the nose intake and everything. Or maybe a F 8 Crusader, though that has a high mounted wing and uh, is actually much less stable. It needs a high angle of attack in order to do pretty much anything. Unfortunately, the cockpit for Melford is sad looking. Don't know what kind of cockpits we're going to get in 1.0. I hope they're good. One of the other safety features is that we've got two tanks that are purely ballast. Oh, well, we're supposed to be purely ballast. Hold on. Those two. It's supposed to be locked. It's supposed to be drawing from this tank and this tank. Except that's locked too. No, uh, it's the tank in the back that I want to lock actually. There we go. And that's for balance reasons. To make sure that our center of mass actually stays very very tight. So I want to move that there. Uh, no, uh out. Well, on the bright side, it hasn't ripped apart yet. It does tend to want to flatten out for some reason. Oh, it's, it's a little bit wobbly here. Control not so good with the air this thin. Uh, we're going down now. That's not right. 
Gonna declare it a little bit nose heavy. But there's this roll problem too. Getting a little bit iffy. Why is it tending towards one side? There's no good reason to. Uh oh. Uh. Uh, I don't think there's a good way to do aer aerial surveillance. Uh, come on. Did we actually get that? No. Well, we're gonna have to. It looks like it was allowing us a lower altitude, but I don't have any control over this right now. It just wants to flip over for some reason. Oh boy. No, 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 no. What is wrong with you? It's just like it suddenly stopped having the will to fly. I had enough air intake air. If I can even find the prograde vector anymore. Where is the prograde vector? Why don't I have a prograde vector? I should see it somewhere. I don't know how my aerodynamic surfaces can be completely ineffective. I mean, right now, there's no reason for us to be tilted in this angle at all. Okay. Well, we can't keep on like this. Let's see if we can do this much. And uh, SAS off. I hope this is a uh, velocity that will allow survival of Milford. Okay, well, what we can do is recover vessel. Okay, well that was disappointing. At least we got Milford back though. Um, what can we do? I suppose we could try the rapier instead and go with liquid fuel and oxidizer. Rapier is the same mass, but then the mass of everything has got to be changed based on the fuel. So if I change from liquid fuel to mixed, this is now a very heavy vehicle. And, and that, well, at least the uh, center mass, well, it changes more than it did before, but not a, not too much. Uh, we'll need probably double the parachutes. And our, unfortunately, our takeoff power is not much. We need to not have quite as much of this. Well, we'll, more, we'll di do the fuel balancing a little bit more dynamically. Maybe that's better. Let's call this Shark 2. And I think the parachutes can handle that. Not great, but uh, Melford did a fine job last time. So I'm going to have Melford go again. Okay. Gear up. But this is not the most updated version of FAR, by the way. And actually, it's got, it's got a few problems with it that have been fixed. I know. Um, among them is uh, the way that terminal velocity is calculated. In fact, it would have been much easier for me to retrieve my rockets and uh, reuse the stages if I had the latest version of FAR in here. Because that one seems to apply more drag on things and thus slows it down. I wouldn't have to uh, use quite as much parachute and other things to slow the 
the stage is down. Trouble is, if I lose my grip on things, there was really no way to recover it. I don't think going into jet mode, uh, not, uh, into rocket mode, will really help. So I have to do that before it decides to go all crazy. Okay, I feel it going off here. Let me, I'm gonna switch modes. Even though it's not the greatest thing to do. Um, let, let's get a little bit closer, but I, I feel it going off a bit. Oh yeah. Oh crud. Okay, well, we're still accelerating. But that wasn't good. Uh oh, but I've lost control. Still does that. Uh, it still loses control at this altitude. Let's see if I can... No, I can't accelerate. It's going to overheat. Try my best here. There's nothing I can do here. It overheats. Okay, well, I'm just gonna have to go with jet mode and try to coax it back into some sort of flight form. Come on. It's, it's going off to one side only. I'm forcing, you can see my rolling yaw is all going towards one side. And I can't hold it. What does FAR say about all this? Large scale stall. Well, well now obviously. Or it's straight up if we go to Well, they call it an anomaly. Maybe it's sort of like the Bermuda Triangle or something. Death to all... whatever, planes. We're not gonna get up to 17 kilometers. Oh no, obviously not. Okay. Let's go prograde and parachutes. Uh, let's not adjust it now. Alright. Melford at least brings the vehicle back. Recover. Okay, so the game crashed, so I had to recover him from the tracking station, but we got Melford back and, and the Shark 2. Let's go into the VAB, not the VAB, the SPH and see what's going on with the aerodynamics. Okay, anyway, so here is, wait, uh, I had to reload the shark so it's not got the right amount of fuel. So we need to make sure that we have the same, no that's still a little bit, well that, that's a little bit less fuel than it had before. I remember the thrust weight ratio being 0.89 or so. Okay, so that's probably about right. Alright, so let's see now. Data and stability derivatives. Well, let's begin at sea level. Let's go to Mach 1. Well, that's pretty normal, but we normally don't hit Mach 1 at sea level. Let's say 0.5 air density. That's fine. 0.3. 0 0.2. And let's say Mach 1.3. 
Well, we've got a thing there. Let's see where that starts to hit. Well, it seems to be more of a problem if we're going too slow. If we're going Mach 1.5, which I'm sure we were at that point, it's fine. What's the slowest speed we can go at an air density of 0.2? Well, looks like uh, 1.3 something. 1.34, let's say. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, the newest version of FAR, you don't have air density. What you actually have there is, is altitude. Let's go to point 1, point 4. Well, it seems like Mach 1.4 is fine. Now, we were going at about 500 meters per second, which is Mach 1.6. So, yeah, 500 meters per second, Mach 1.6. 600 is pretty much 2. Seems a bit fishy to me. Now, what kind of solution do I have? I guess we have to use some sort of pod instead of a plane. I want to find a plane solution, but I'm not seeing what I can do to make this any better. This is a pretty, pretty safe design when you think about it. Center of lift is like that. By the time we get to altitude, uh, well, we drain from this tank, let's say. It, it moves back like this and we weren't fully drained on this tank yet when we hit uh, when I turned on rocket mode we started doing this but we didn't get very far along that and that was only in desperation because we were already out of control so yeah Maybe maybe more rudder, maybe more vertical stabilizer would help. But far isn't indicating that, so that's the trouble. Okay. I think uh, I'll have to think about this. Let me let me do a mock up of a possible uh, solution without an airplane. Let me go to VAB and try that. Alright, so may I present the prospector? The prospector will go up, head on over to the site, take whatever aerial surveys we need, and then return back to the KSE, hopefully. That is my goal with this. Um, could have used the uh, Command Pod Mark 1, it wouldn't have rubbed off too much Delta V, but uh, the Command, mark, uh, command, pod, command pod Mark 1 uh, has the blade of shielding on it and I'd have to dump that off in order to uh, make it comparable to the Tau command pod anyway. The Tau command pod doesn't have a uh, blade of shielding but that would uh, give us the mass savings we need to match up the mass with the Tau command pod. We don't need the crew capacity of three obviously um, but uh, yeah ultimately the key thing is that the Tau command pod is cheaper as well so yeah, I just went with it. it. It's it's a little bit... It really should cost more, honestly. The Tau Command Pod should cost more. But anyway, we have it. It has the right form factor. That was another consideration. Uh, the version with the Command Pod Mark 1 just wouldn't look quite as... Well, I don't know. It wouldn't work quite as well. Anyway, we've, we're using an Aerospike because we don't use those enough, I think. And... I am I'm pretty much ready to go let's let's pick somebody else we don't need everybody I don't think this takes too much courage but we need some sensibility so Shelbles Shelbles Skirman will take up the prospector to take a look at these sites alright so we know where we're going and we'll definitely be high enough to get there here we go Okay, I want you to retract, yes. Let's not allow firm aerospace to rip you off. I'll just do manual control. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. How could this go bad? Okay, well, forget this. Uh, there's a reason I put all that parachute on it. 
Hold on. Let's let's recover immediately. Uh, parachutes. Uh, yes, we can do that. I thought that the reaction wheel in the TAL command pod would be enough to control this, but apparently that's not the case. But that's all right. We we can manage. Okay. Let's bring this back. Okay, let's see if I can go to the VAB without crashing the game. We're getting close to the RAM limit again. Okay, so I guess what we need is small vernier thrusters. And the best bet is probably these guys. How horrible will our Delta V be if I put four of these on? Not what I wanted. Oh, and that's not right anyway. <laughs> it's even worse when they're actually firing. Carrying them is bad enough. Letting them actually use fuel is worse. That's hilarious. Well, we can make it heavier, I guess. Well, the whole benefit of carrying the aerospike is sort of diminished, but... I don't know, there's not much of an alternative. At least they have a vector range. Okay. Let's let's go with this modification for now. We'll we'll have better versions later on, I'm sure. Save and launch. Okay, here we are again. Let's see if this works. If not, something else is going wrong here. I I think maybe I'll have Smarty SS control it a bit. Because maybe it's just me. I could be getting tired after all those plane missions. Okay, come on. There we go. Alright, let's get FMRS off. And here we go. Just execute that. Gear up. 88 we have to hit a particular altitude so we can't go too high uh, actually uh oh hold on Uh, I think I better take this, buddy. Hmm. Well, I've got it, but that, that was weird. Oh, wait, maybe I don't got it. Ah, uh, slipped me. Okay, well, I've got it back. Strange, strange aerodynamics I've got this time. Oh, lost it again. Come on, prograde vector, prograde vector. No? Wants to be as far away from the prograde vector as it can. Fun ride for shovels. Wants to head to one side. It's just like the plane. Just like the plane. It wants to head to one side. Doesn't care where prograde vector is or anything.
What have I done to deserve this? Is there something, something else going on here? What are we doing? <laughs> Strange to be still trying to aim for it. We're nowhere near. It's just not going fast enough. I've been partly killing my horizontal velocity the way I've been going. Well, let's try. Well, now we seem to have it. Sort of like the reverse of the plane. This thing was uncontrollable at low altitude, but has good control high altitude. Okay, well, that's as much as I could get it, but we're nowhere near. Oh, well, let's just proceed. Maybe it's just top heavy. Well, it can't be. The the aerospike is heavier than the command pod. Well, I have one last theory. Uh, doesn't apply to the plane, but maybe it'll apply to this. So I'll do one last try, and I'll put it on launch clamps. That's all I can think of. And I'll go a little bit slower on the whole. I'll throttle down and uh, I'll have Smart ASS do a more natural launch profile. Okay. Okay, shovels is available. Let's let's make that fix. I'm also going to action. Nah, maybe not. We'll leave it be. Okay, just shovels. All right. Well, let's try this out, and then I'm gonna call it quits after this. And here I thought this was just gonna be a quick mission to get a hundred science. <sighs> well, best laid plans, right? Alright, well, let's try this out. We don't need full throttle, I don't think. Well, why is this floating above, by the way? Alright. Let's try it. Gotta go with my normal ascent profile. I'm gonna be at a heading of 135. Let me have it roll first. Seems to roll just fine. Have pitch 88. Pitch 80. Seventy-five. It feels like it still wants to go. Gotta try and keep it well within the prograde vector, which I should have done before too. Let me throttle down a bit. Okay, I think I gotta cut it there. Maybe I was just being sloppy because I was tired or something. I don't know. Okay, beginning aerial surveillance. I want to be able to get close to the KSC at least, so I'm gonna flip over to this side. Uh oh. Oh, right, uh, Smart ESS, that's fine. Uh, not the focus I wanted, actually. Right, right, right. So, uh, are we done? Yet? Why over Wilton's Anomaly? We're not low enough. Okay, we got Wilton's Anomaly. Alright. Now... Whoa! No, no, not what I want to do. 
Come on. Of course, this is a ridiculous place to do this. This is not where the booster would boost back anyway. This is way low. And yeah, well, anyway, we will... I don't know. We'll splash down. Yep, we'd have to get much higher. I tell you, Kerbal Space Program really loves to crash when I'm about to recover the vessel. It's the scene change, I think. Anyway, we got shovels back. Let me quickly do the other two, and then we'll have... Wait a minute. Wilson's anomaly should be gone, right? Uh, yeah? Or maybe uh, the three sites are, they just remain there as long as the contract is unfulfilled. Hopefully. Okay. Anyway, uh, another launch. Okay, here we are, and this time we've got Dude Van Kerman. And... I, I think that's a big enough spread that we can't hit both of them at the same time. Let's just hit this... Uh, well, let's hit the more difficult one, Scott's Dawn. Seems more difficult. Okay, SAS on, throttle up, and launch. And we don't need to go that fast. Well, through this part we could. Let's execute that one. Oh, crud. I don't know, something about this shape Far doesn't like, suddenly, because I could have sworn it was alright before. Well, it wasn't launch clamps, uh, it wasn't the uh, landing stress, that's for sure. But, it doesn't give me much leeway here. Well, keep going around. No, no, not too far down. Come on, and now we're nowhere near where we need to be. Come on, get closer. No, it flipped to the wrong diagonal. Oh, now it's stable at the wrong point. Come on, prograde vector, prograde vector. You know you want to. Come on, stay there, stay there. Oh, okay. Just stay there. We're rather high. Well, there's a way to fix that too. Should be about right. Okay. Well, Dude Van Kerman also had a very interesting ride. Okay, starting aerial surveillance. But we're very high. Hopefully that means that the area is so broad that once we get low, it'll be covered. I'm leaving the area of Scott's Dawn, and it did not work. Okay, well. Ooh, we're coming in much faster than I thought we would be. Not leaving a whole lot of time for the parachutes. Okay, spam space bar. Go, go, go. Alright, well, apologies for the failures in this episode. Next time I will try to do something a bit more successful. I will ponder this problem and we will see what we can do. Oh, don't tip. All right, recover vessel. Well, look on the bright side. At least everything was fully recovered. We sent a lot of Kerbals up, and we brought them all back down safe. And we also brought the vehicles back safe. So, on that 
minor positive note, I guess I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.